How's it going guys? This is Forensic Forex with Yante and I'm back with another video. This is your first daily update for UJ. So every new month, I post in the Telegram channel a couple pairs that you guys would like to see me track every single day for the new month coming up. As we can see, US dollar versus Japanese yen has won. So we're doing that for the rest of the month of May. Many people are going to ask me, what about gold? What about pound dollar, euro dollar? Yes, those things are there. But right now, I want to specifically focus on one pair. It keeps me organized. It shows you another market as well. And it allows you to be more focused and maintain on one thing at a time. People are trying to track 20 pairs at the same time. It doesn't work that way. Cut it up, make it smaller and digestible for yourself. Tracking one pair a month is very digestible for me, which is why I try to do that for the channel and for you guys as well. If you've been rocking with me for a while, you know I use this concept that ICT has taught the IPTA data range look back every start of the new month. Looking back from May 1st, I count back 20, 40, and 60 days. So it's three quadrants or 20 day look back. Now, why do we do that? We do that because we know the market, the algorithm that's computer programmed, it's gonna have to go off of previous data to project new reactions or price action moving forward. So the next 20 days, I suspect something to happen. I could get into a position trade, a swing trade, or have a nice scalp opportunity. I find the highest high and lowest low within each one of the quadrants. So the highest high for this quadrant in 20 day is here. The lowest low is here. The highest high in the 40 day is here. The lowest low here. The highest high is here. And the lowest low is here for each one of those quadrants. This is going to be my basis going into the new month. I'm going to find all the unbroken swing highs and swing lows. That's generally going to be my buy side liquidity or sell side liquidity where the market is most likely going to target long term or short term. Anything that is broken already, like this 60 day high or this 60 day low, it's normally just going to be an old low or old high. And there could be a reaction around that point. As you can see, price recently just ran up into an old 60 day low and very close to the 40 day look back high as well. Then I look at the most obvious PD arrays that I can see. The most easiest ones that I can see is the busy. There's a fair value gap or speed going up, breaking swing highs. So there's a market shift occurring here. So price running through swing highs like this is a market shift. I'm going to suspect that price action from the daily chart is bullish because when price breaks a swing high, that generally makes me say there's bullish momentum or the commercials are stepping in and trying to get price higher. If I see a swing high broken, I want to see a higher swing low form. So there's going to be some type of retracement or pullback and then price running higher. Most likely going to see that form inside the fair value gap here to push higher. Does that mean I'm bullish for the rest of the month for May? Not necessarily because things can change as we go along and progress. The first week is NFP week. First week, normally don't like to trade. Unless you know exactly what you're doing, I would suggest you go in risk small. And don't trade NFP. But all in all, the first week normally is going to flush all the retail traders out. Get them all, blow all their accounts. That's normally what it's going to do. And then the rest of the month, commercials are going to step in. From a seasonal perspective, since we're looking at UJ, I look at the dollar and the yen. So coming to the dollar, we can see for May for some basic macros. We can see May. It's suggesting that it's bullish. Does that mean dollar is going to go up for the month of May? Not necessarily, because there are many times where price does not follow its seasonal tendency for the year or for that month. It doesn't follow it T to T. But we have seen it respect April and a little bit of March of the declining dollar. So it's been following that. May is suggesting higher prices. Japanese yen, however, it's not doing the opposite. It's actually neutral, sideways. It's not bullish or bearish. It just looks to be ranging back and forth. Does that mean Japanese yen is going to range? Not necessarily. It could rally or it could decline. Does this mean it's unsuitable to trade or unfavorable? Most likely unfavorable because I normally like to see the currency pairs that I'm trading. When I break down each one individually, they move opposite for the month. So if dollar was going up for the month of May, I would like to see Japanese yen going down, British pound going down, Australian dollar going down, euro going down, New Zealand dollar going down. And the same thing can be said vice versa. If I look at the most recent COT data as well, so last month we can see on the 25th, longs versus shorts. We're not looking at the non-commercials. We're mainly looking at the commercials. We're trying to see 
what their current stand is. Are they net long or net short? So when you take the longs and the shorts and you subtract it, what are you normally going to get? A positive number. Because we can see it's a larger number here, it's a shorter number. If you get a positive number, odds are the commercials are net long. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Japanese yen is going to rally because they could be also in a hedge program. Even though that the longs are saying that they're outweighing the shorts, price action can still reflect a declining market. A lot of people don't realize that they're really confused about that. They're like, wait, the COT data says long, longs are higher than shorts, but the market keeps going down because they're hedging and you don't realize it. And we'll talk about that a little later in the video with barchart.com. From this point on, I'm suspecting higher price action, just solely based off the swing highs being broken. So that's my first breakdown. Seeing that the dollar as well is bullish for the month of May, I'm going to see that price action supports that. And as we can see, it is supporting it so far. I'm still going to expect some type of pullback and then go long. I need to get a higher swing low formation. So the same thing here, there's a higher low on the left and a higher low on the right. It's only three bars. I need to see that same formation higher and then the third candle in that formation broken and price continues to rally higher. Now, if price gets beyond the 40 day high, because many people ask us, what if price gets here? Do you expect a sell off now? Not necessarily. I would suspect price to continue to chase swing highs. So there's later swing highs previous to what we're looking back in the data range or the data pool, we could see that the swing highs here that's higher than this 40 day one. So these are relatively equal highs. We also have this one up here, this one up here. So if price were to continue going higher, I'm simply targeting swing highs. If you're a buyer, you should be targeting swing highs. If you're a seller, you should be targeting swing lows. Now, just because it gets out of the data range or the pool that we're looking at doesn't mean we can't look back to see what other highs could be feasible for a draw on liquidity. Next, I like to look at the weekly chart. So if you look at the weekly chart, we can see that we failed to make a lower swing high. We can see how price is being held up. So if we could check it out from here, you can see price is not breaking swing lows. It's making higher swing lows. So the market makers may be stepping in and buying dollar because they're preventing the price action to go lower. They want price to go higher. We can also see I'm going to mark out every single one. So that's a swing low. That's a swing low. This is a swing low. And that's, is this a swing? It looks like it's close. This is not a swing low. If they're all higher, we want to see this swing high being broken right here to really give us full confidence that this market, it wants to continue going higher. And then we get that same formation of it going higher. We even have a higher swing low here. So from the weekly perspective, I could see that price is going higher. So this is a swing high here. So price is looking to probably draw for this. And then ultimately, if dollar is going to keep going higher, we can see that price is going to probably draw up to this long term. It may not be in the month of May, but it may be throughout the rest of 2023. It potentially gets here somehow. Now, if we look at the yen pair, so just to look at the yen futures, if we look at from the weekly chart, we can see the inverse is happening. So we're having a lower swing high. So price is failing to make a higher swing low and is making lower swing lows instead. So this is a good sign. I like to see that the yen contract is going lower while dollar is going higher. And this swing low here could be the target. Now, when it comes to the hedge program, so if I come to barchart.com, normally how people use this the COT data and they look at the net zero line, when price is below the net zero line, that means that the market makers are most likely net short and sell opportunities may be favorable here, but that may not be the case. Price action can be still going higher while being down here below the net zero because they are possibly in a hedge program. This red line here, however, is what I've used by taking the last year's net long and net high. So I took the highest net high, net high position and net low position, broke the range in high, in half I mean, and then I got this new net zero line here. So when price is below it, then I would be like, okay, that's supportive of the market probably going lower. If price is above it, that's probably price going higher. You can see here for Japanese yen, 
it's above net zero, but we could see the price action. If it's above net zero, it should be long. We could see the price action is still moving higher. Why is that? Because they're possibly hedging. And if you take their highest net longs and highest net shorts and cut it in half, we can see that price action is either threading the, the line here. This is our new net zero line. If price is below it, then it's most likely going to be selling or they're in the hedge program. So they're above zero, but they're below the last net long and net short, which makes it a hedge program. So all in all, hopefully this was insightful. I don't want to keep this too long, but this is basically how I like to go about breaking down a new pair going into the new month generally. If we were to also look at yen futures contract and we used IPTA for it as well, we could see it's looking for lower price session or trying to target a swing low here. Now, does that mean price could break this swing low and go higher? Yeah, that could definitely happen. But there are times when price action will continue falling and falling out and never gets back to these highs. Many people think that it's a simple old break then run high. That's generally what I like to look for. If you look at the IPTA data library, you'll see the most of the examples in those episodes, I'm showing you a break on one side of liquidity and then running the other way. Those are the months I really like. But there are months where price breaks to low and doesn't find a signal to go higher. It just continues to go lower instead. It creates a lower swing high and lower low. And basically, that's a bearish market. An inverse, if you make higher swing highs and higher swing lows, that's a bullish market. Now, if we look at the DXY as well, because I have to look at all the market pairs and everything to my advantage at this point, same thing here is occurring. So I'm looking back 20, 40, 60 days. I'm finding the highest high and lowest low. I'm trying to see whether or not what I can gauge moving into the new month of May. So if dollar is going to be bullish for May, I want to see signs of price breaking swing highs and making higher swing lows. So if this recent swing high, let's see the most recent one we have. If this one here is broken, I would want to see after it breaks this, a higher swing low, higher than this one and this one. And price action should target probably the 20 day high and the 40 day high or the old 60 day high as well. That is all I have to say for the first episode. Hopefully this was insightful. Peace.